Hi, welcome to another episode of Adventures in Common Lisp. We're working through Peter Norvig's classic Lisp textbook, Paradigms of Artificial Intelligence Programming. Today we're finally on to Chapter 2, uh, and Chapter 2 follows the development of the program which is used to generate random English sentences. And this program goes through a couple of iterations and ultimately settles on a rule-based or data-driven solution. So for the first part of this video, I'm going to spend some time going over that solution uh, before tackling uh, the first exercise. So to start with, we have a couple of very straightforward little helper functions. Mapend applies fn to each element of list uh, using map car. And then once that's done, it assumes that fn is going to return lists uh, for each element. Um, and then it's going to just smush them all together. So suppose you have some function. We're going to say fn. Uh, fn will take, say, a number, and it'll return a list with just with that number twice. Um, if we use mapend, uh, on the list one, two, three. So first we're going to apply fn to each element and we're going to get a list of multiple lists. Uh, and then mapend is going to just smush them all together into one big list. Um, so that is just a useful utility function. It's actually defined in the first chapter of the book. Um, and then the next function is this one here called random elt. Uh, which, as the documentation string says, it chooses an element from a list at random. Um, so all it does is we first get the length of the list of elements. We choose a random number uh, from zero up to, but not including, the length. Uh, so that just gives us an index into the, into the list that's valid. And then we use the elt function to access that element. And then here we have the grammar. And I'm showing you the grammar first because I want to emphasize that this is sort of uh, a nice way to approach problems in common lists. We define the problem um, in the way that's most natural and expressive for us. And then only after that, we write the functions to sort of uh, interpret that, that definition or that data. Uh, the focus really should be on making uh, it expressive at the high level. Um, and Lisp is, is really nice for being able to do this because it's so easy to just stick data of whatever kind of form you want into your program. Um, and it's, it's so powerful, the tools it provides to uh, manipulate that data. So here we've got a grammar. Uh, and as you can see, the format is just we want a rule name on the left um, and then how you construct that thing. So in order to construct a sentence, well, a sentence is a noun phrase followed by a verb phrase. Um, and this is the syntax which Peter Norvig chose to express this idea of like this and then this uh, concatenation. Um, then a noun phrase is an article followed by a noun. Uh, and well, let's see, an article is either just the word the or just the word a, a. <laughs> the, it's either the definite article or the indefinite article. Um, and then a noun, we just have like a selection of nouns, man, ball, woman, table. Um, and, and as you can see, this is how Peter Norvig chose to express this concept of either by not wrapping um, the, the different symbols inside of a list, the way is done up here in sentence, for example. You could, of course, choose whatever syntax you like. You could write something like or between everything. Uh, all that matters is that eventually you, um, you're able to parse it. Um, but this is, this is nice and easy. Uh, it doesn't introduce any extra stuff for the parser to worry about. You can just very easily distinguish between the structure of this, which is a list, and the structure of this, which is just an atom, uh, because that's sort of a concept that's built right into common list. You don't need to, to worry about parsing it yourself. So let's see, we, we also have verb phrases, which are verbs followed by noun phrases. 
uh, and verbs, we have hit and took and saw and liked. And of course, uh, there's no way that this is going to really generate the full extent of the English language. Um, there's all sorts of things which aren't taken into account here, pluralization and conjugation and different tenses and whatnot. And this is defined as a parameter, which is kind of like a constant. The idea is that this is, this is the thing that never changes. And then we have this grammar variable, which we define using def var, uh, that points to it. Um, and the idea is that we can kind of define as many constant grammars as we like, the def parameter, and then using def var, choose which we want the program to actually use. And this is mostly just a, a stylistic thing, this distinction between variables and parameters here. So now we need to write the functions in order to, uh, in order to, to sort of process this grammar that we've defined. To You might think of it as, as interpreting it in a way. This is kind of like... Uh, a very primitive little programming language, so to speak, and uh, this is our interpreter for that language. So first we want to get the left-hand side of the rule, that's just uh, the first element in the rule, um, it's the name of the rule, uh, and then the right-hand side of the rule. To do that we first get the rest of that list, and then in order to just get rid of this arrow, which is decorative, uh, it doesn't actually do anything, uh, we just call rest again to get the, the next sublist. And next we want to get the rewrites for a category. Um, so this takes a category or like a rule name, so we might pass in sentence or noun or whatever. Uh, we use the ASOC function. Um, in order to look it up in this list. This list is what we call in the Lisp world uh, an association list or ASOC list or a list, which means the first element is the key, which we can use the ASOC function to look up. And that's just a convention. This isn't like a hash table. Looking up uh, elements in this list just involves uh, doing a linear scan through the list, unfortunately. But for small tables uh, or associations or mappings or whatever, uh, this is just a very convenient thing to do. This is usually what you want to use when you um, aren't worried about the linear time lookup because the list is so small. Um, and it's worth noting that ASOC, like you might think that ASOC would, would take a key and then return the rest or something like that. Um, it will actually return the entire... Uh, element, so to speak, of the A-list. So we're going to look up this category, sentence or noun, phrase or verb phrase or whatever. Uh, we're going to get back the whole rule from ASOC, and then we're going to use rule RHS to just get back the right-hand side of the rule. Um, and that's really all we need to sort of um, like work with and manipulate these grammars uh, and get out of get out of this data the uh, important semantically the important semantic content that we want um, and then finally he gives us this generate function so for example I'm going to just um, start compiling all these functions in. Uh, and then I'm gonna, just going to call generate. And I need to pass in something which we can uh, look up in the grammar uh, and use to generate something. So in my case, I'm going to pass in sentence. That's what I want. I want to generate a sentence. And it's going to give me back a random sentence. In my case, I got a man saw the man. So we see we have a noun phrase, a man. Um, followed by a verb phrase, and the verb phrase is a verb, saw, and then another noun phrase, the man. So now, uh, I hope that all made sense. If not, um, you know, read the textbook. <laughs> and now we're going to try to solve this exercise, which just wants us to modify generate a little bit and have us avoid calling rewrites twice. So, as you can see in generate, uh, we first call rewrites to get the rewrites for the phrase in the cond to test to see if there are any rewrites for the phrase. Um, 
And then if there are, we again call rewrites in order to actually get those rewrites. It's notable that we can't just uh, get the rewrites up here because rewrites is expecting to get an actual category. Um, so if we have a list here, if we're in this case, um, where we are getting noun phrase and verb phrase, this list like this, um, of one thing followed by another thing. Um, if we just pass this into rewrites, it wouldn't work because we'd call ASOC on that and try to look it up in the grammar and we wouldn't find. Nothing in the grammar uh, has this as a key. Uh, nothing in the grammar A list. So uh, this would just fail. We, uh, we need to first make sure that we're not in this case before we call rewrites. So one way you can do this is, um, and this is sort of trivial, is okay, now that we're here, we can, in the true case, get the rewrites. And then do another cond and be like, well, if we have rewrites, then uh, do this branch where we try to generate something based on those rewrites, and then otherwise just do uh, the final else case. And this would work, um, but uh, it sort of, I feel, defeats the purpose of even, even using a cond. Uh, these are both basically ifs. Uh, you've got the true case and then the the true branch of the if and then the else branch of the if. Um, and it's like a little messy to have these nested cons like this. What we should actually do is use the uh, set f special form and define a, uh, a variable which we're going to call rewrites. Um, go. And so what's what's happening here is we're looking up the rewrites for the phrase as we were before and now we're storing it in a variable using set f. And if you're familiar with um, a programming language like C, uh, in C in C uh, when you assign to a variable, not only is this a statement that does something, this is also an expression which is evaluates to um, whatever you assign. So in this case, it would evaluate to five. Um, and this is used a lot in loop statements or whatever, where you're like, When, when you want to test for, for nullity, for example, um, not only does this get you the next thing, uh, if there is no next thing, it also ends the loop. Um, this isn't a video series on C, though, so let's continue. But the principle is the same. Um, this is going to evaluate also to the contents of, or it's also going to evaluate to rewrites phrase um, so this way, you don't need to call rewrites again, you've got it in this variable. And notice that we had to define rewrites up here uh, before we set f to it, otherwise we'd be writing to a global variable. We want to just limit it to this scope. And also notice that we can use the same name, rewrites, uh, for the variable as we do for the function, um, because in common Lisp, functions live in a different namespace as variables. Uh, so as long as we are using a variable that's not in, not in head position, this is going to refer to the variable. Uh, if we had used it in head position, 
the first expression in the list, um, then it would look up the function. Uh, but because it's being used in non-head position, it looks up the variable. Uh, so let's just evaluate that. And let's try to generate a sentence. And again, it works. We get the man took a ball this time. And so there you go. There's the solution to exercise 2.1. Um, I hope you learned something. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, please like, comment, or subscribe. Uh, and stay tuned for more adventures in Common Lisp.